The following video is sponsored by Squarespace. Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today and we're talking about Dragon Age 4. Now by the title of the video, you may have looked at it and went, oh god, what happened? Nothing has actually occurred. This all spawned through a discussion I was having with another member of the Bioware community and it got me thinking about how I'm actually kind of worried about Dragon Age 4. Now, if you're a longtime Bioware fan like myself, it's actually been pretty good for you lately. We're not bathing in controversy. We had a good launch from Bioware. Granted, it's a remaster, but Mass Effect Legendary Edition did a lot of things right. And overall, it was very well received. I was super happy to see that after Andromeda and Anthem, they got a good release out there. But Dragon Age 4 is arguably the most important game in Bioware's history. They've had two of their lowest reviewed games release back to back. Then they got a remaster out. This is kind of the show it moment for Bioware with Dragon Age 4, which I anticipate will be a 2023 game. Why am I concerned though? But first, a word from our sponsor. Just surfing the web again for another Bioware article. Hey there, looks like you're wasting a lot of your time. Um, I, I guess so. No, you don't need to be reading websites. Why don't you go make your own with Squarespace? Thanks to Squarespace, you have the power at your fingertips to create a website whenever you please. Better yet, it's super easy. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated, members-only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. One of the best things about Squarespace is its built-in SEO tools. I actually make a lot of use of these for my own personal channel. This type of stuff is important to grow your platform. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Mr. Matty plays to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Why am I concerned though? Well, I'm seeing shades of Anthem and Andromeda in its development cycle. We already know how those went out. What I want to do is recap some reporting and have a open, honest discussion about Bioware and where they stand now with Dragon Age 4. Because surprisingly, if you've been tracking it closely, we have a pretty good idea of that. So if you're new here, you're interested in Bioware, its future, you want to talk about Dragon Age, Mass Effect, maybe KOTOR, hopefully we see more of that soon, then go ahead, sub up, happy to have you here. With that, let's start the recap. So it all begins with what exactly is Dragon Age 4 and when did it begin development? This is the number one telltale sign for Bioware being in some type of trouble with this project. So all this reporting comes from Jason Schreier when he was formerly at Kotaku, now at Bloomberg. Let's get it started. Following 2015's critically acclaimed Trespasser expansion, the Dragon Age team split up. Many of the people who worked on Inquisition moved to the troubled Mass Effect Andromeda, while a few dozen developers, which included Dara and Laidlaw, started spinning up the next Dragon Age, which was codenamed Joplin. Let's just start marking the timeline now. Dragon Age 4 began in 2000. 15 okay for those of you who've been watching me for a long while fallout 4 was coming out and they just started development the year is now 2021 and dragon age 4 is many years off that shouldn't really make any sense to anybody because dragon age inquisition killed it it was a critical and commercial success people want more from it that came out in 2014 where is next dragon age it continues on saying, I heard more about the first version of Dragon Age 4, that's already a bad sign, which was rebooted in October of 2017. And the current version, which is now in development at Bioware's office in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So they started in 2015, they restarted in 2017, and if you've been tracking the channel closely, you'll know as we get to it in this timeline, they changed a lot of things dramatically with the game just this year, which I think is going to push it back another stretch of time. What is Dragon Age 4 though? What was it originally in this Joplin version and what is it now? The answer is a little bit concerning and somewhat vague as we, we get closer to the current time. The story behind this reboot isn't just a story of a game going through multiple iterations as many games do. The Dragon Age 4 overhaul was a sign of Bioware's trouble and how the company has struggled in recent years to work on multiple projects at the same time. It was indicative of tension between EA's financial goals and what Bioware fans love about studios' games. It led to the departures of several key staff including veteran Dragon Age creative director Mike Laidlaw and it led to today's Dragon Age 4 whose developers hope to carefully straddle the line between storytelling and the live service that EA has pushed so hard over the past few years. The original version of Joplin, according to a Bioware developer, is, quote, some of the best work experiences, end quote, according to a Bioware developer. We were working towards something very cool, a hugely reactive game, smaller in scope than Dragon Age Inquisition, but much larger in player choice, followers, reactivity, and depth. I'm sad that game will never get made. 
One thing that's very common with Shire's reporting that is that people run away with one quote from one person, one interpretation, and that spells exactly what it is for the entire studio. But I'd be lying if I said this was not what I've been praying for since Inquisition came out. I like Inquisition. I get it. Not the worst game in the world. But Bioware is at their best when they condense and they focus on reactivity and replayability. That's what they were doing here with Dragon Age 4. And now we're going to start to see how that dramatically changed. A large chunk of Joplin would center its narrative on heist. The developers talked about building systemic narrative mechanics, allowing the players to perform actions like persuading or extorting guards without the writers having to handcraft every scene. It was all very ambitious and very early and would have no doubt dramatically changed once Joplin entered production. But members of the team said they were thrilled about the possibilities. By the latter half of 2017, Anthem was in real trouble and there was concern that it might never be finished unless the studio did something drastic. So in October of 2017, not long after veteran Mass Effect director Casey Hudson returned to the studio to take over as general manager. EA and Bioware took the drastic action, canceling Joplin and moving the bulk of its staff onto Anthem. A tiny team stuck around to work on a brand new Dragon Age. This is the rebooted one in 2017, codenamed Morrison, that would now be built on Anthem's tools and code base rather than Inquisitions. It's the game being made now. Unlike Joplin, this version of the fourth Dragon Age is planned with a live service component, built for long-term gameplay and revenue. One promise for management, according to a developer, was that EA's balance sheet that they'd be starting from scratch and not burdened with two years of money that Joplin had already spent. So the budget isn't going to be limited. But the difference is now this game since 2017 has been designed in mind for monetization, revenue, long-term recurring player base. And there are some cool ideas there that have potential. Uh, there's been rumors of cooperative play, drop in, drop out, where players could take control of your party members, reactivity where choices globally would influence where the story went rather than just the story choices your character made, which I think kind of evolves what an RPG could be. So they were thinking on a different level, which I can't appreciate. But the difference is that they have been working for a number of years now on a game that had multiplayer in mind. So what I want to do is before we dive into some other development documentaries of Anthem as well as Andromeda is talk about what's happening now with Dragon Age. In a report from Bloomberg in 2021, the next Dragon Age, which doesn't yet have an official title or release date, had previously been designed with a heavy multiplayer component, said the people, who asked not to be named because they were not authorized to speak to the press. In recent months, it has transformed into a single player only game after EA was stung by a recent multiplayer flop. So remember that, just these last couple months. So they've been working on this multiplayer style Dragon Age game since 2017 and only just now in the early months of 2021, they've shifted gears. The diverging trajectories of two recent games changed the minds of Wilson and other executives at EA, according to the people. One was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, a single player game released in November of 2019 that won critical acclaim and outperformed EA's sales expectations, reaching more than 10 million players in its first four months. The second was Bioware's Anthem, a multiplayer game that was widely panned when it launched. The games show that the single player games could still be lucrative and that Bioware, traditionally known for its single player role playing games, might be better off returning to its roots. Lastly, for the 2021 reports, is that Bioware had fought internally for a while to go back to being a single player game. Since then, there was a Q4 2021 earnings report from EA just documenting the likes of Apex Legends, Respawn, their EA Sports Initiative, Battlefield, all mentioning stuff coming in 2022, but none of that had to do with Bioware, which makes me believe even more strongly now that, yeah, we're going to see that game in 2023. I know a lot of my audience is big Bioware fans, so this may be stuff that you've already been familiar with, but for those who aren't, I really wanted to set the stage for this conversation, which is why I'm concerned. You're seeing now that this game has been in development for six years now, and four of those years were with something in mind, multiplayer, monetization, live service, and now fortunately they've taken that out. But here's where I think you're gonna find Dragon Age. Remember Avengers from Square Enix? Remember how it was very apparent if those of you out there who are unfortunate like me enough to play that game went through it and you saw in the first couple of hours, Avengers felt like a story game, felt like a single player Marvel Avengers storyline. I was like, okay, this actually isn't too bad. Then suddenly you get to the war table and you start to pick your missions and you're like, what? This feels like a completely different game split in half. You can feel that and it ruined the game. Now, unless Bioware were to completely reboot it again, which I doubt they would like to, they're really in an awkward position 
with Dragon Age 4, which had what I think would be the more attractive idea in mind, reactivity, replayability, more condensed, traded that in instead for multiplayer stuff, and now they've pulled all that out. You're still going to see the skeleton of that for sure. I can't imagine they don't have that there, especially if they were considering global choices and all of these different things like co-op. That stuff just, how does that get replaced? Essentially, it can leave a vacuum there. But what's really happening is that Bioware is yet again having issues managing a major project. They have struggled time in, time out. We see it with Anthem. We see it with Mass Effect Andromeda. We're going to get into those in just a little bit and redocument some of their history to see just how closely they align. Once again, some of you may see this as just a pointless recap, but trust me when I say, like, look at the similarities here and tell me I'm crazy. Th this game's not in a good spot. Let's start off with Anthem. At the beginning, they called it Dylan, and this started in late 2012 and 2013 when they finished up the Mass Effect trilogy. That's when they leapt over into Anthem. So Anthem was in development for a total of six full years, really, seven full years. But the core gameplay loop, the story, all the missions in the game were made in the final 12 to 16 months leading up to the release of this game. Meanwhile, with Mass Effect Andromeda, what's really interesting about this one is it was developed in five years, but by most accounts, Bioware built the bulk of the game in the last 18 months leading up to its release. Pull it out now, bird's eye view. Here we have two games that were in development for roughly the same period of time that Dragon Age was, right? Anthem, six years. We have Andromeda, five years. They were in development for a while, but in both instances, they got completely scrapped, rebooted, redone. And a lot of their work was done in a very small stretch of time, like just over a year. And in that way, you can look at something like Anthem or something like Mass Effect Andromeda, especially Andromeda, which I don't think was so awful. It's just not as good as the trilogy, but still be kind of impressed. Like, wow, they did this in over a year. That's pretty wild to think about. Imagine if they had their ducks in a row. That's what you always wonder. And I can't help but feel that they may be leading to repeat history with Dragon Age 4. Is it going to be a bad game? No, I'm not signing it off now. But I think the concern is warranted. When a game is in full development for four years, starting in 2017, going into this year, 2021, and now they've pulled out major mechanics, although for the better of the game, I would imagine, you're still going to feel some of that. I can practically guarantee it just based off past examples like the one I mentioned with Avengers is I feel like it's going to lead to that point where when they were designing mechanics and everything around multiplayer, and then you got to pivot again, how exactly do you do that without not having to scrap a bunch of things, restart development in, in a small way? And I feel like there's just shades of what we've seen in the past here with Andromeda, with Anthem. So maybe I'm crazy. Uh, this is one of those videos I make where a lot of people are afraid to talk about this stuff because like, I don't want to look wrong. I don't want to look like an idiot. I mean, let's be honest, I'm a moron. I'm kidding. I'm I think I'm kind of smart. You let me know. But in all seriousness, I like to have these conversations because I want to speak my mind and I don't mind if this is something that ages poorly. In the case of Anthem, you can go look it up. I made a video right when it got released saying why I'm not excited, like why I don't think this is a good idea. I think I think it's not smart for Bioware to take this route. People literally jumped down my throat, told me I was an idiot for it. How could you do this? You're just being negative. I mean, look how it turned out. I've tracked this company closely and I love this company dearly. And for good reason, they've made some of my favorite games. So, you know, I think we can have a, an honest and open dialogue about this. And if I end up being wrong, I'm going to be the first one celebrating before anyone makes a video or a tweet or whatever about me. I want to be wrong about this. I don't want to be worried about Dragon Age. But what's happening is we're having a prove it moment with Bioware and I'm seeing shades of past development woes. So with all this information presented or represented to you again, kind of in this chronological order and comparing and contrasting, how do you feel about Dragon Age 4? I could be alone on this, and I very well admit that, but I just want to have a conversation on this uh, since I find it so fascinating that Bioware may be stumbling again. They continue to reveal these games through trailers and trailers and trailers, but it may explain why they're doing these prototype things and concepts when it should be much closer. So I leave you with all of this. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who let us just have open dialogue like this, just random, not news-based videos. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk with all of you very soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.